All right, welcome back to another episode of Reacting to Crash Videos. It's been a minute. In this episode, we have a lot of catching up to do. We have eight total crashes, three of which unfortunately were fatalities. I'm gonna put those at the end of this video. As always with the series, the idea is to evaluate crashes, try to learn a lesson from them to better the community, make this sport safer. Also, as always, if you enjoy this channel and this series, be sure to check out the first link in the description, tuckergot.com, get some Risky Biscuits Co. merch, or if you need an ozone wing, harness, reserve, propeller, hit me up, info at tuckergot.com. I'd be happy to help you with recommendations on gear. So first up, we have a simple picture. I believe this is from Canada. I just wanted to include this because it's kind of lighthearted. Dude flew into power lines and is straight up sloughing it, holding on with his arms and legs with a full paramotor on his back. I have no other context to the situation. Uh, lesson here is obvious, don't fly into power lines. All right, video number two. In this one, we're gonna see what happens when you try to launch a trike with zero cutting skills, zero chill, and zero desire to abort. <laughs> Looking back on this one, obviously this guy had no control over the glider. I assume he's a new pilot, new student. But not just that, he obviously didn't have control at any point during the launch, but he was just full throttle committing the entire time, which is exactly the opposite of what you want to do. On a trike launch, or any launch for that matter, if something starts to go squirrely and you're losing control, abort. Kill the motor, stop what you're doing, reset. In this case, go back to the drawing board and learn a lot of cutting skills and then proceed onward. All right, video number three. This is another student who's learning to fly via an instructor on the radio. So first off, before they even get off the ground, you can notice that they're still holding on to the A's attached to the risers when they take off. This is not the hand position you wanna be in. You wanna be releasing your A's and onto your brakes, which is your control method to actually take off. You see them drop their hands onto the brakes after they get in the air, but the instructor shouldn't have told this student to continue the launch until they dropped the A's and got onto the brakes. Second mistake, which is pretty obvious, is as soon as they get in the air, they drop their throttle. This causes the glider to pitch forward and a steep descent happens and they kind of plow into the ground. I would kind of want to chalk this one up to bad training. I would think they need to go back, do some more kiting, uh, gain the awareness to let go of your A's and get onto your brakes. Maybe do some motor sim time when you're running up the motor on the ground, feeling out that uh, throttle response and the power band and everything. Luckily, I don't think they were injured. On to video number four. This one was emailed directly to me. Let's take a look and then we'll talk about it. So in this one, the pilot is attempting to do some wing overs and he just horribly mistimes the wing over. Wing overs are all about energy management, which is timing. When you roll into the wing over and how you distribute that energy into the next maneuver. In this case, the pilot just held full power, built a lot of energy and waited way too long to enter the next wing over to the point that he just pointed at the sky. He didn't give it any input to go the opposite direction. And that caused him, I assume, to unload the glider. 
the thrust of the motor shoved the cage into the lines and subsequently exploded the propeller, tore up the netting and tore up the cage. This is something I haven't really seen much of before. One, I admire this pilot for doing his wingovers at an extremely high altitude. That's good because that gives you time to correct issues if they happen. However, the problem was obvious. He timed this wing over way, way, way too late. Video number five, this one is insane. This one's, I think, a solo trike, and it looks like an ozone triox glider, which is a glider I have a lot of time flying. Let's look at the clip. So judging by this video, it looks like the pilot pulls way too much brake on one side trying to do a turn at a high power setting and just spins the glider. Now the crazy thing to me is having flown Triax a lot, I know how heavy the brake pressure is on this glider and how hard it would be to physically spin it. So they must have been yanking extremely hard and muscling this thing. He was also at a higher power setting, which doesn't really help the angle of attack spin scenario. But overall, just way too much break. I don't know what the outcome was. He just crashed onto this roof. But this is exactly what happens when you try to force a turn with too much brake input. You spin your glider. All right, so these last three incidents I have to share with you guys were fatalities. And because of that, I'm not gonna show the actual incidents. First off, condolences to all the friends and family. I know how rough it is to lose someone in the sport. But I think the best thing with any tragedy, if there is a lesson to learn, is to discuss it and share it with new pilots so that we hopefully don't repeat it in the future. This first one, I'm not even sure where this happened, but the pilot's doing some aggressive wingovers up high. He looks like he's doing good. And then he just spirals into the ground without stopping. So the discussion around this incident was that the pilot most likely blacked out. This is something that has happened a few times in the past where a pilot's doing high G maneuvers and all the blood gets sucked out of your head, you black out, and I guess your body ends up in a position where you're just holding brake in one side, continuing a spiral into the ground. It's something to definitely be aware of, like your physical limitations of how many Gs you can tolerate before you start to black out. I think for a lot of people, it's different. I know that if you're dehydrated, if you aren't feeling healthy, you're sick, that threshold comes down much lower. It's hard to say how you could even prevent something like this other than just being aware of what your own tolerances are and not exceeding them. So this next incident happened down in Florida, and as far as I know, there is no video publicly of this one, but this one is kind of a similar type situation, but a different cause the pilot spiraled directly into the ground. And in this case, the general discussion is that the pilot was an experienced guy. He had just gotten a new glider, a Jin Carve 18, which is a pretty advanced glider. And they found that one of the trim tabs was let out completely while the other one was still in. The assumption would be that the pilot didn't let out the trims on the risers left and right symmetrically, which is what you're supposed to do. The assumption would be they let out one side and that caused a spiral dive. In my experience, this is something to definitely be aware of. You want to release your trimmers symmetrically, um, but every glider I've flown, if you dump one trim, Generally, you can counteract it with brake and weight shift on the other side. Obviously, this depends on the model of the glider. If it's a beginner glider or an advanced glider, it depends on the loading, if you're lightly loaded or heavily loaded, and it depends on the trim range. If you have a larger trim range, that's a larger differential between left and right. So there's a lot of factors that can affect how bad it would be if you dumped your one trim asymmetrically. In this case, that is what I guess everyone is assuming happened. Asymmetric trims and a spiral into the ground. 
This final incident happened in Oregon and it was a tandem paramotor that flew into water and unfortunately, it sounds like the passenger drowned and the pilot survived. We talk a lot about the dangers of flying over water. Obviously, if you don't have flotation, if you go down in the water, especially water that's moving, you can get tangled in the lines. Your motor makes it hard to swim. It's hard to unbuckle your harness and eventually the motor can start sinking. So drowning is a really big risk in paramotoring. And it's one thing to make that risk when you're flying solo. I know I'm guilty of it but it's a whole nother level when you're flying tandem. Especially in a trike, you know, you're, you're responsible for the passenger's life. And to me, I always dial back the level of risk very significantly when I'm flying tandem. But this is definitely something to learn from. So those are all the incidents I have to share with you guys today. I hope maybe you learned a little bit of something from these clips and incidents. Stay tuned, we've got more AliExpress perimeter content on the way. New giveaway coming up soon. Hope you enjoyed. Till the next one, have fun, fly safe, peace. Bzzz.